The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Terry Dale at USTOA. First and foremost, let me say Happy St. Patrick's Day to all of our Irish friends and family. Hope you have a day filled with a lot of fun and festivities. I'd also like to say a special welcome to Pam Hockey from Globus, who is our new chairman of the Health and Safety Committee. Before our, I introduce our speaker for today, I do want to remind you of a couple of upcoming USTOA events. We have on Tuesday, April 7th in Los Angeles at the Intercontinental Los Angeles Century City, our next business after hours, and that will take place in the lobby bar from 5 to 7. So again, let me just say it's the Los Angeles Century City lobby bar from 5 to 7. Hope to see as many of you in the LA area as possible. Second, I just want to remind you that we have our fourth annual con Congressional Caucus, June 17th to the 18th. It will take place again at the Washington Court Hotel, which is just steps from our nation's capital. Um, a lot of activity has been happening over the course of the last couple of weeks. Uh, many of you know about Cuba and what to normalize uh, Cuba for general travel purposes. And then just this afternoon, Congressman Heck, who addressed our caucus last year, reintroduced JOLT legislation. So we're very excited that that is once again on the radar screen for everyone. So join us the 17th and 18th of June back in our nation's capital. So with that, let me introduce this afternoon's webinar. Uh, it's entitled D Corporations, the New Face of Corporate Social Responsibility. So I like to call it the triple P's, it's people, planet, profit. And what we're going to learn today is how do we incorporate key values into our organizations to support corporate social responsibility and sustainable tourism. Uh, we have a certified B Corporation member, uh, and I think USTOA's first and only B Corporation member, and that is the president of MaShare, Mr. Derek Hyden, who so many of you know has been a longtime supporter and sponsor of USTOA. We thank Derek for his leadership and for providing the content for today's program. So Derek, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Terry, for that very kind introduction. And it's just wonderful to be able to have a chance to share our story at Marsha uh, in the journey to becoming a B Corporation and how that's really changed our thinking um, towards corporate social responsibility, but uh, also towards our purpose. Um, my goal today is to help provide knowledge and insight about B Corps. It's a rapidly growing movement. It's redefining success in business. And there are significant benefits to becoming a B Corp. Certification positively impacts just about everybody you have a relationship with, not just your shareholders, but also your employees, your customers, the communities that you care about, and also the environment. Uh, I'm going to share with you details of the impact assessment that is available free of charge to anybody to get a benchmark as to how their business currently stands and share some best practices, uh, uncover how they can understand some best practices to move that needle uh, positively. My personal wish is that we are able to collaborate and consider small changes that help us all be better stewards and champions, not just for each other, but also for our environment during this crazy and quite amazing journey called life. Um, I'd be remiss if uh, I didn't credit much of this presentation, not only to the amazing staff at Marshare, but to our amazing customers, many of whom have partnered significantly in our own journey. And um, some of the ideas and the practices that we've implemented come from those customers. We're incredibly grateful for that. I'm going to start off with a short video that provides an overview of the B Corp movement. I'll then dive a little deeper into some of the most common questions I've been asked. We'll also have time at the end of the webinar to answer questions you may have. Uh, I'd suggest you just make a note of them, and then at the end, um, or towards the end, feel free to submit them in the questions box, which, in, which will be on the right side of your screen. So why B Corps matter? People using business as a force for good is not something that's particularly new. But B Corp is considered a fair trade certification, but instead of just for a bag of coffee, it's actually taking the whole company, everything the company does, 
B Corps meet higher standards of social and environmental performance, accountability, and transparency. Certified B Corporations use the power of business to solve social and environmental problems. The community that's generated is quite incredible, as hopefully you will uh, discover as we work through. Active. Um, people have such trust for each other in this community. This is a fun story because I've been around a little bit of time now with all the gray hair that I have, and back in the sort of 70s, 80s, 90s, the real focus was on shareholder corporations, maximizing shareholder value. But today, the 60 million and growing conscious consumers, they are voting with their heart and their values, not so much with their wallet. 2.7 trillion socially responsible investors, and well over, and I know the number is much larger than 100,000 social entrepreneurs and sustainable businesses. And this shift is moving towards the stakeholder corporation. So in addition to shareholders, the profits that are generated for a business are used to give back through the workforce development, the communities that a business cares about, our environment, and then ensuring the right governance is in place to ensure that our core purpose is preserved for the future. Certified B Corps have an excellent route to provide that preservation of their core mission in the event that the company may be sold in the future or have some form of change of ownership. And I'll cover that in a minute. But in our business, uh, which is very much focused on consumer engagement, um, a, a very big story for us is consumer behavior. And we're seeing this changing fast. So if we look back in the last 20 years, great products, providing great brand experiences, um, something that creates a, a relatable word of mouth uh, feel good. However, consumers today are looking more under the hood and actually at the companies behind those brands. So what do those companies actually stand for? And we see this as being um, a, a five to ten year journey before we reach a real tipping point where if the business is not actually standing with clear values and purpose, consumers will vote with their feet. Uh, there's a few press clippings there from articles and it's just a simple Google of B Corp will yield thousands of articles. Um, I can announce that uh, B, uh, B Corporation will be partnering with Whole Foods uh, Market soon, and so these grocery signs that you see from previous promotions in regional markets will be coming, uh, come on a national basis, which is very exciting. Um, one other point I'd like to mention about B Corps is um, every business is unique. Uh, you've got everything from a consultant single-person consultant to a multinational corporation um, that's publicly held. B Corp really allows any business to participate, and the certification process um, really reflects the different needs of each business. So you may not be perfect in your ability to employ a local workforce, but you're absolutely brilliant in protecting the environment. It will still enable you to um, raise your certification score which I'm going to sh uh, share a little bit about now. This is Patagonia's B Corp Impact Assessment. Uh, this is actually the foundation of the B Corp movement. Once certified, every B Corp has to be certification program, has to be done every two years, and this is an extensive audit process. To certify, you need to score 80 out of a theoretical maximum of 200. Uh, that may sound like a very low benchmark, I uh, believe the highest B Corp B Corps at around 150, but the majority of B Corps are somewhere between 80 and 110. last week to spend the morning at Patagonia and I can personally attest to what an amazing business they have protected for the future 
and honestly, this is just one of 1,250 B Corps. Um, so each each of the B Corps are doing something quite unique. I'm often asked who certifies B Corps, um, and the foundation I mentioned earlier is called B Lab. They're based in Wayne, Pennsylvania. They have the most amazing team. Uh, if you want to look for business coaches uh, who are not charging a penny for their services when they're helping people consider the B Corp certification route, you couldn't ask for a more positive community. Happily answering every question um, under the sun. The B Lab works in three spaces. Uh, first of all, the certification model, which we'll come to in a little bit. Secondly, ensuring um, the le correct legal structure is in place um, so that businesses can be recognized and protected from shareholders um, who may not be so happy with some of the work that they're doing. Currently, there are 26 states um, that have passed legislation, including California and uh, New York. Um, and I'll come on to what that means in a moment. I believe DC and also the Canadian provinces are also coming online with that protection. And then the last area is B Corp analytics. And this is the real engine um, that, that benchmarks, measures, and reports on impact. This is the world's largest database of verified social and environmental performance data for private companies. It's also the exclusive source of impact data on certified B corporations and provides GEARS ratings. This is a free rating to companies uh, that matches up impact investors, fund managers, and impact entrepreneurs globally to ensure that what matters can actually happen. That's a phenomenal benefit. So states what certified, what's the difference? Um, for anybody that's looked at legal entities, you typically will see a C corporation or an S corporation. But in those 26 states, there is also a state benefit corporation. This legal entity provides protection and permission to consider its triple bottom line economics. So the impact is not just on shareholders, but also on all stakeholders. In plain English, this means a shareholder uh, in a majority scenario or a group of shareholders cannot oust the directors or officers from an organization because they're not happy with the dollars they may be seeing. A certified B Corporation, on the other hand, is conferred by the nonprofit B Lab. It meets high level of social and environmental performance and makes a legal commitment to consider all stakeholders. This is footprinted into their core DNA. It is a for-profit, uh, this is for for-profit companies and it's in any countries. I think currently there are B Corps in around 60 countries. I'd love to share a little bit, if you uh, will indulge me, into kind of our early days. Um, as often happens, I think, with the Marsha team, is we, we find ourselves inspired by other people. Um, for disclosure, I do serve on the board of Tourism Cares, and I've been an enormous fan of Tourism Cares since its inception. Um, and there was a summit, a sustainability summit, that was hosted by the Las Vegas Visitors Convention Authority and Planet Hollywood. And this was held at the Springs Preserve in Las Vegas. Now, this was September 2008. And the clock was ticking to um, the crash. And tour operators in the room, there was around 120, had many, many things on their mind. And honest, sustainability and CSR development probably was not anywhere near the top of their list. There was a wonderful panel of speakers sharing some best practices to a more sustainable future, including examples like investing in biofuel buses and clean air technologies. But all of these required very significant investments. I was in the audience and just looking at a lot of blank faces. And on my desk, I had my big metal water bottle um, that somebody had given to me three months earlier with a challenge that if you use this for 21 days, the bottle is yours. All we ask is that you pay it forward. So Marsha paid it forward to the people in the room. We asked everyone in the room if, that, uh, if they were willing to take a personal step that didn't cost any money, we would send them a free water bottle. 40 people signed up, um, so a third of the room. And I received some remarkable responses from people who had subsequently paid it forward to other people. So they, these individuals, CEOs of tour operators and other organizations,
Shared goal is very much to help move the needle. Now, there's another one-two story, which is Procter & Gamble, which is one of our clients, have gone through a tremendous sustainability journey. And right around that same time of 2008, they required us as a preferred supplier to start measuring our impact in three areas. We'd never done this before. We'd always done some good things, but we never actually measured it. So they taught us what to measure and how to measure, and we started reporting it. And at the same time, Better World Telecom became our new phone provider because we got really upset with Verizon seemingly just charging us more and more and more. And I discovered that Better World was a B Corp. They were a founding B Corp. That went to the back of our brains for about four years, uh, and then they resurfaced again, as you'll find out later on. We spent about five years working on our core values. Uh, we call them our craft, Marshares craft, which is the core values of collaboration, respect, authenticity, family pride, and trust. I think one of the greatest gifts that any business can offer its team is the ability to allow its employees to be themselves. That truly creates a happy home. If you're not yourself at work, you're probably in the wrong place. Um, and so we've always put a real focus on talent. So for us, our inspiration in the early days was helping move the need with our clients and how do we attract the best talent and then retain that talent. So if we move forward to today, our craft has sort of expanded into the four measurement areas that we certify on based around governance, workforce, community, and environment. I'm not going to run through each of these, but you may notice some industry elements in the lower left corner. That's not to say we're a member of those organizations. It's to say that we are actively participating, helping move the needle within the industry for everything from less barriers to trade, freedom to travel, uh, Terry mentioned earlier on the caucus um, in Washington, and we've been able to participate in every one so far. And from the bottom of my heart, I encourage everybody to come to Washington, D.C. and participate. The recent news of Cuba is phenomenal, and it's because of the lobbying efforts of USQA and other trade organizations that this can happen. So this involvement also gives us a better understanding of both our clients and our industry. Um, one practical point, for the last six years, we have offset our U.S. carbon uh, footprint by measuring the typically measuring every impact that we have. And we do that through a grant to the Conservation Fund, who are great partners um, in that journey. So there are a number of B Corp benefits that come with the um, journey, uh, including B Corp actively marketing uh, the certified B Corp. So this is our latest um, recognition by B Corp. You can see some of the key benefits um, uh, that we've applied in our business um, with the donations and the way we kind of look after our employees. We provide two days of paid volunteer. 100% of the employees' medical premiums are paid as well as 100% of their 401k. Um, this is just a small example. But the community benefits of shared values, attracting talent, and engaging employees, and the other items on this list are so, so powerful. First of all, we feel we're part of the global movement that is gathering momentum. When we started our certification, which was in May of last year, there were 900 certified B corporations. Today, there's 1,250 certified B corporations. This is a movement that is rapidly growing. So here are the steps to become certified. Step one is to actually get a baseline, just so that you can understand how your co company performs against dozens of best practices on employee, community, and environmental impacts, as well as corporate governance. For every question that's asked, there's a document on best practices. So if you happen to score low in a particular area, you can see what are the best practices to help you improve. This is an amazing resource and was incredibly helpful to us on our certification journey. Step two is to compare your impact, see how uh, you stack up against other folk. And then step three is to create a plan to improve your company's practices and help your staff implement them. Once you have achieved the 80 score, the next step is to meet the legal requirement, which is determining the path for your corporate structure and state of incorporation. B Labs is working very hard to expand the uh, benefit corporation status uh, amongst more states. Uh, and this will also happen around the world as well. And then finally, uh, B Lab has a declaration of interdependence and 
every B Corp has signed, and that is posted up on the B Corp's website. Here are some of the measurements. Um, I don't want to scare anyone when I say there's 200 questions and measurements covering each of these areas. I have to say it's daunting at first. When you look at it, you're thinking, crikey, there's absolutely no way I'm going to be able to pass. But if you actually have some core-based CSR activity in your, in, in your business, the chances are you will actually score quite well, but you'll see where the gaps are and where the opportunities are for improvement. Once that's identified, implementing it is all about commitment. Um, most of the changes that we incorporated into our business cost very little money, if anything. I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek. Um, and the why of business. Um, and when you connect the dots earlier on to Marcher's own view that workforce and moving the needle with our clients and partners is such a powerful combination. I kind of like this simple graph. So every organization on the planet knows what they do. Hopefully they do. Typically the products or services they offer. Some organizations know how they do it. And these are the things that set them apart, um, or they would consider unique and differentiating from their competition. However, few organizations know why they do what they do. Why is not about making money? And of course, that's the most common response that you would hear, but it's really not. That's simply an outcome. The why is a purpose, a cause or belief. It's the reason your organization exists, the reason your organization exists. So the word scramble on the right side are core words and their frequency of words that came from the millennial group. Now this group currently represents 50% of the global workforce. By 2025, that will be 75% of the workforce. According to Harvard Business, Harvard Business Review, millennials want to uh, work with organizations that connect to a larger purpose. And Hewitt Associates reported that higher levels of employment, employee engagement outperformed the stock market by nearly 20%. So B Corp certification demonstrates to employees that their company walks its talk and gives them the tools to set goals for continuous improvement. Now there's a number of initiatives that B Lab are undertaking that are bringing the B Corp message into campuses so that people emerging and graduating from university are making better decisions as to who they go work for. Partnering with organizations like Intuit, uh, which with QuickBooks represents four million businesses, that's over half of all businesses in the United States, and the consumer campaigns, which I mentioned earlier on, for example, the partnership with uh, Whole Foods. the needle and consider B Corp certification. So I'm going to share a very short interview with Biz Stone, founder of Twitter. Um, millennial, you'll hear some weird words, but listen intently. I urge you to listen intently as he talks about B Corps. When we started Twitter, I wish I had known about the existence of B Corp. When you legally become a B Corp, you're held accountable to doing good things in the world and to earn money. So the CEO is making a ton of money for his company now. Um, he decides to spend is actually as opposed to if you're a B Corp and you said that you're going to do that, then you're probably going to leave. you doing a great job. For my new company, Super, we make sure every quarter we're doing, we're doing something social with the team and we're doing some kind of volunteer work. The first slide of every board meeting is number of total uh, hours volunteered number of dollars are donated, which, and when we do donations, I don't consider them to be charity, I call that marketing. So I do believe that the future of marketing is in so many other businesses, uh, you know, the younger people, the millennials, whatever you want to call them, they're 
and they'll, they're looking for meaning in that products and services, and they'll choose, they'll easily choose one over the other if they know that this company uh, is supporting some cause or doing something uh, uh, more meaningful in the world than just trying to optimize their wealth. So it's, it's really good for, for younger entrepreneurs if they thinking about, well, how can we turn early by, you know, doing, doing good while doing well, and then that, if that will compound, and if, if we ever get lucky enough to be able to do it all day, think of how big our good part will be. I'm also now going to play an overview, which you can also see on the website. I mentioned I was playing this earlier, and I failed to play it. We have a dream. And for the world. Others share this dream and have begun to turn the dream into a community. This community signed a declaration of interdependence and invited others to join them. Now more than 900 companies from 29 countries are turning our community into a global movement to redefine success in business. B corporations use the power of business to solve social and environmental problems. An eyewear company disrupts an industry and serves the poor. A food service company that serves over one million meals to low-income public school students every week. A manufacturer that goes green and helps workers move from welfare to a career. An online bookseller that recycles used books and funds local libraries and global literacy. An outdoor apparel company that stewards the environment. An ice cream company that maintains its mission. And investors make money and make a difference. As a community, we are passing laws across the country. Creating a new kind of company that serves society and shareholders. We are leading a global movement of people using business as a force for good. Join us. Be change. I apologize for that, um, but hopefully that gives a very nice summary of the uh, webinar so far. I want to offer a tool to people that are curious to learn more. Um, the B Corp Handbook was authored by an amazing guy named Ryan Honeyman, who has a consulting and a business that is also a certified B Corp. And this is an example of incredible leadership and collaboration from the B Corp community. Over 100 B Corps contributed best practices to make this the most useful handbook for any company to learn how to use business as a force for good. It's a, companion, it's a great companion to help every business measure what matters using the B Impact Assessment because it provides a week-by-week -week roadmap to getting a baseline and also engaging your team. Um, those steps there of engaging the team, creating the plan, are actually much easier than they sound. Once that plan's in place, implementation just happens because your team is on board with it. There are fine-tuning fine -tuning always along the way, but the real story is the celebration of the next steps because once you've initially certified, you just find that there's such a voracious hunger to improve. So my offer to folks, if they are seriously interested in looking at BCOR, um, uh as a, as a roadmap and they would like to have a copy of the handbook, um, if they could please email me, my email address will appear shortly, um, and I will be very happy to organize for one of the handbooks to be sent to you, compliments of Marsha. Um, likewise, uh, questions that may come up, um, super happy to answer those. Some of you may be thinking, hmm, B Corp, uh, oh sorry, and one last point is that there are relatively few businesses in the travel space currently certified as B Corporations. Um, I met the team of the Cilia Africa last year, and they were an amazing inspiration in giving me the confidence to proceed with this. 
Uh, at the last USQA conference, Couchsurfing um, had a spotlight put on it as having the largest number of, uh, of beds, uh, more beds than the four major hotel chains If you know folk in these companies, feel free to reach out to those as well. However, if B Corp is not right for you at this point, I would urge you to consider joining the Tourism Cares community. This chart shows the triple bottom line. Thousands of uh, big businesses, whilst they may use B Corp impact assessment and best practice tools to learn, it may just not be right for you. This uh, Tourism Cares um, membership doubled last year, and on April 2nd in New York, um, Mike Ray and the Tourism Cares team will be hosting a national con con conversation on CSR best practices, uh, and this will be an in-person meeting as well as a webinar format. And details can be found from the Tourism Cares website, or again, feel free to email me and I'll happily send you uh, the outline for that webinar. Um, it's a rapidly growing community, which we're very excited to see a growth in membership. So with that, um, I'd love to turn this over to any questions, um, and Peggy, I think you may be on the line, and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them, and if I can't answer them, I promise I'll get back to, um, get back with, uh, with an answer as follow-up. Um, yeah, as of right now, I don't have any submitted, so please type in your question, I'll be happy to uh, relay that to Dirk. Okay. You did such a great job, Derek, that I don't have I have a question, Derek. So, you know, this roadmap can feel daunting, look and sound daunting. What was the most challenging element to you as president of the company and then to your organization through this whole process of getting certified? The stop. Just putting your toe in the water and starting? Just putting a toe in the water. Life is full of so many um, uh, diversions and pressures and challenges, you just feel you do not have the time to do this. So it's getting started. Do they then provide a mentoring system? So is it just, not just, that all 900 companies that are currently certified can serve as a mentor or do you get specifically assigned one? How does that work? Yeah. I think that would be very useful. Yeah. Or is it the staff? Yeah. So uh, two things. B-Lab themselves have a whole team that is geared to mentoring people who are just, if nothing else, interested in taking the assessment to benchmark their score without any interest in becoming a BCOM. Just that simple, let me understand what this means, where my current score is. So their staff are phenomenal with that. Once you kind of start to say, I think I'm more interested in this, they naturally introduce you to some certified BCOM they feel are relatable to your own business. And so in my case, uh, we had conversations with four different certified BCOMs that were incredibly helpful and I think gave us all the confidence to move forward with it. So I'm curious, uh, I think you indicated you have to have a minimum of an 80 out of potential high of 200. Yeah. And then there were these different governance and uh, areas. So do they weight this? So let's say for governance, one particular initiative, you know, you work with USQA uh, for lobbying and educating, is that a 10 point yep. or so they, they weigh and give. So with the, every question that you're asked, if you go back to those 200 questions, every question actually has a pie chart that gives you the weighting and it will be from zero weighting to uh, all four squares of the pie filled in where you're getting a maximum number of points. So if you want, and, and those are um, research based as to what has the most impact. Um, so actually a lot of the things that we do don't gain a score because they're not considered to have a high enough impact. So you probably had access to, my assumption is you kind of assessed my share based on your understanding of the pie chart. How did you rate yourself initially yeah. without the, the team of B Corps professionals? Yes. So, so, and this may give some confidence to the folk listening on the room. So for those of you who know Marsha, I in my head had estimated that we would score 70 out of um, that, that theoretical 200, that we would be 10 points shy, and we scored 71. Wow. That was a huge <laughs> confidence boost. Yeah. So many, many, many people in the travel and tourism community do not realize that they are already very close to certifying. 
they don't realize it. And once you dip your toe in the water, you realize there are so many benefits to doing this. And the incremental impact on our business, we have not been actively promoting this, but just from referral and people, whether it's uh, clients or new people we're introduced to saying, I like this extra transparency. It's very powerful. So I'm just curious, and this will be my last question, by the way. But so that tells me that you didn't just try and get an additional nine to get to that 80. Where did you ultimately end up? Yeah. And, and then obviously you can continue to build upon what yeah. you've already established. Yeah. So uh, it's important actually not to focus so much on the numbers because it is a journey. And the key thing is reach that 80 benchmark. Somebody that scores 80 is celebrated the same way as somebody scores 150 okay. right. simply because you've made the commitment to the journey and the recertification every two years shows that. So in our case, um, and the B Lab team uh, were quite perplexed by this because I think they thought this was unusual. Um, when you sign the state documentation to turn your organization over to a benefit corporation, you gain seven points. Um, we refused to do that. We wanted to reach that 80 point mark without you know, the, the piece of paper. So basically, we wanted our actions and impact to enable us to certify. Then we would sign the piece of paper. So we actually certified, if you go onto our web profile, you see we have a score of 81. Compared to the B Corps that signed the piece of paper, that would be the equivalent of 88. Um, and our team, we, our CSR team, this is another thing that's for my team. Um, we, we are oh, close to 30 people in the United States. In particular passion areas. I never ever believed that we would have that many people interested in helping this journey of improvement. So again, every two years though, you go through yes. the, the process. And you have to recertify. If you don't hit the 80, then you are no longer a certified B Corp. The vast majority of B Corps um, just incrementally work on increasing their score right. just because it's good right. it's practice. Right. Beautiful. This has been inspirational and uh, a, a roadmap for, I know, uh, a look at this. So thank you so much, Derek. Very well. And I look forward to seeing folks in LA and our nation's capital over the next couple months. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody.